Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios and I'm back with another acrylic painting tutorial. Today we're painting six different types of rocks. This is a long one, so let's strap in and get started. So for today's tutorial, uh, I've got a piece of bristle paper already uh, just kind of prepped and ready to go here with our six types. I've got them sketched out. And for each of them, I've laid down just sort of a base tone of green to kind of give you an understanding of how these rocks might sit if they're looking in grass or whatever, any kind of green base land. In addition uh, to that, you're going to need uh, just a flat brush and some sort of a small brush uh, to detail with. I'm using a liner today. As always, I'll have my colors off to the right-hand side here in a separate video. Colors for today, I've got some Cerulean Blue Chromium Pure. If you don't have this color, you can use a Thalo or Ultramarine and mix a little bit of white into it. Uh, I've also got my Cad Yellow Medium Pure, uh, my regular mix of Mars and Ivory Black, and some Titanium White. Uh, now I also have this green color off the side that I used on the rest of the piece earlier. Uh, don't have to worry about that if you need a good uh, tutorial for mixing good green grass colors, you can check the card in the upper right hand corner of your screen for my six different ways to paint grass video. Uh, I also have a little bit of water off to the side as well. I have a much smaller container today. Since this is just a demo, I don't need my full bucket, um, as well as just a rag to wipe my brush on as I go forward. So today we're going to be doing six different types of rocks. Now these are the types of rocks I use in my uh, paintings all the time. Not all of them are super realistic. Uh, some of them are more fantasy uh, oriented, especially the ones uh, on the bottom row. But uh, these are sort of the six that I are, are my go-to and, and when I'm not doing uh, mountains, uh, I'm doing smaller rocks uh, in a landscape and these are those six. So for our rocks today, I decided it'd be fun to do a uh, sort of cool gray uh, for our general rock color. So something you think maybe like a limestone. So for this, uh, I'm going to use blue and white and black to make that. Now ideally, with uh, a lot of times, you want to be using a more chromatic black uh, to uh, make your rocks. And a lot of times I'm actually using uh, a brown and then kind of graying it out a little bit. Uh, but for this I thought uh, just a regular simple, somewhat more cool Lean, leaning towards neutral gray would be uh, just fine for illustrating uh, different types of rocks that we have here. Just dip that, wet my bristles a little. Now because I'm working on paper, you're probably going to see me using water a little bit more than you might uh, use on like a canvas or a wood panel, but uh, just keep that in mind as uh, you're viewing and as you're working at home. So the first type, uh, it's simply basically a box. Um, if you saw the uh, video on the second channel, uh, which was sort of part, part one to this uh, tutorial, and it was just about sketching uh, these six specific types, uh, we're basically going to be making a three-dimensional box in two-point perspective. So if I were to just outline this so you could see it. Well, there we have our nice simple box. Now, rocks aren't boxes, obviously, uh, at least in, unless, of course, they're you know shaped and cut uh, to be that way. But for this, we're just going to start by blocking that shape out. And towards the bottom, I like to kind of flare out the bottom edges a bit. And on the top, I'm actually just going to add a little bit more white too, because that's going to be ca uh, catching some, uh, catching our sunlight in most cases, or whatever artificial light you happen to have. And in this case, I'm adding the white just to distinguish the uh, the top from the sides, so I could very easily lose track of where I wanted that line. And you can kind of afford to be a little bit messier. Uh, you know, let your you don't have to that doesn't it doesn't have to be a hard clean edge. You know, you can play with your perspective and fudge it a little bit. Take the edges up further, maybe. Pull it in. 
fix your quarters. Okay. So there we have a simple flat surface. Now with any of my tutorials, uh, if you've seen them before, you know that my uh, painting techniques is based on three simple layers, midtone, shadow, and highlight. And what we just put in here is establishing that midtone. Now our shadow, we're just gonna go in straight into the black and the blue. And I don't want to wet my brush here. I want to use a nice thick amount of paint and just sort of the texture of the brush. So normally by the time you're painting rocks, you will have already established a light source. I actually didn't do that yet. So go ahead and do that now. So my light for this, I'm going to have coming from the upper right. This is just a simple little symbol. It's a circle, like an equal sign and an arrow. I can't remember which artist I picked this up from, but it's a really effective way to sort of remind yourself of where you wanted your light. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put a second one in here for our next piece. So we have our dark. So everything in the shadow. Just grabbing and pulling and then tapering that off. Now I'm going to dip once. I just want to get this a little thinner and a little darker. Now this rock is going to be casting a shadow. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit too. And in most cases you're not using actually black for shadows, but again, I'm, so, I, I'm just simplifying my colors here. And what I'm showing you today is how to paint the shape and do that simple uh, three-layer shadow and highlight. Okay, so I, wi I wiped that off. I have another rag off to the other side of my uh, uh, other side of the camera here. And now you wouldn't get as much shadow on this side, but you would get a little bit. So right where they meet, I'm really just doing a dry brush here, adding a little bit kind of where that edge, we're kind of where the edges meet on that side. Right about like that. Now for the highlight, I'm going to go into my white. A little bit of that gray color we had before, but mostly white. And add a little hint of that yellow. Like so. Now for this is our highlight color. So I'm going to be grabbing from this edge where our light's hitting and just pulling this way. I want to think about sort of the pers perspective we established. Not totally breaking that, but... And rocks, rocks are really just a lot, about, a lot of dry brushing. I'm going to pull a little bit of this light in this side too. Like so. And those are your basic you know, mid-tone shadow highlight. Those are the shapes, anyway. You know, they're there. Now we are going to go back in and detail this, but I want to wait till this dries before I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. Rinse my brush out a little. So the second uh, type of rock we're going to do is just smaller stones. So if you imagine this as a big grassy field, maybe some rolling hills kind of going back and forth, and you have stones that are going to be a little bit larger, maybe about the size of our brush here in the front. And then as they go back towards the horizon, they're going to get smaller uh, in uh, general perspective. So I'm going to grab my middle gray, uh, middle gray, as we were using before. And I'm going to start with the corner of the brush here. Just, And you can do this with a round brush. It would be a little bit easier. I'm just using a, uh, a flat for this today. I don't even know where my guides were. We'll just make it up. So I'll put them bigger one there, bigger one here. As we get a little further towards the back, we can maybe make them a little flatter. There's one there. We'll do, we'll do three on this layer. One, two, three. Then maybe one here towards the back. And now I'm just using the corner of the brush. And then 
towards the very far back, they're just going to be tiny little pebbles, basically. Barely going to be able to see them. Like so. Actually, I think for, for good measure, I think we'll just throw one more right in front there. Now, as before, I established my light source is coming from the from what was the right here is now the left. Grab our, I think I'll grab my highlight first this time. It doesn't matter which one you do first; it doesn't have to be shadow then highlight. Uh, you can actually do uh, one th th thing I do a lot with my rocks is I start with my darkest tone and then do mid tone and th and then do highlight. It doesn't matter which order you do them in; it's just so long as you're establishing all three. And then a lot of times I'm doing a. Uh, a second or a third highlight on top of that highlight and a second or third darker shadow. So you can always push those extremes as long as you start more in the middle ground and then slowly kind of extend outward uh, to either side of your value scale. So for this we're kind of just following in that same shape and then coming at the edge and then just pulling and dry brushing that, that down. If you want to check out uh, a little more, more in depth of a video on the technique of dry brushing, I also have a tutorial for that. I'll throw a card up in the corner for that as well. Just grabbing and pulling. Establishing where those highlights would hit. And if you're having trouble establishing highlights and shadows for rocks in general, uh, go outside, find rocks, um, and draw them. Uh, it's the easiest thing you can do uh, to really kind of uh, expand your understanding of where the light and the shadow uh, for, for different types of rocks is going to play. So, little tiny ones. And for those ones in the back, I'm probably not even going to touch that highlight until we can even uh, get to uh, the smaller brush. So here we're going to our dark, so blue and black. The blue and black, really, it's a, it's a cheap way to get the, the blue darker. I don't recommend it, a t you doing it a ton, I, I don't like recommend relying on it, but it's a nice, quick, easy way to get that, that blue uh, toned down. I imagine this scene might be a little sunnier of a day, so maybe you don't see quite as much of the dark. And your midtone, your your first midtone is sort of a base layer. You, if if you're kind of struggling, like I I don't, I don't know, I'm not, I don't want to cover up my midtone. No, do it. Cover up your midtone because um, you can always go back in and paint over top of that. When in doubt, but the real trick with rocks, I would say, is when in doubt, don't forget to add your shadows. Because those faces where, faces and cracks where the, where the light isn't hitting, are going to be the thing that stands out uh, a lot more. So I'm going to lean my shadows a little bit bluer here. And I, for one, love using strong shadows in my work. Not all the time. Not all the time you're going to see strong shadows in landscapes, but I love putting them in because they're just so much fun. And when you're shadowing, uh, your light source sort of acts as a vanishing point. So I'm kind of keeping all of my shadows uh, sort of facing sort of back away from where that light source is coming from. Yeah, this blue looks a lot better than this shadow. <laughs> I got a little too, I got a little too carried away with the black on, on that first one. Plus, in using blue on top of grass, it's just gonna really let the green show for, show through, and you, know, you not really have a problem without it. Now these shadows, I think I can probably squeeze in here in the back. We'll highlight them in just a bit. All right, so our first uh, rock's probably dry enough now. I can work in my uh, highlights. Uh, at least second highlights. I'm going to go in and grab a lot more white. Kind of use the same highlight color I was using before and mix into that, but grabbing a lot more white and again a little bit of yellow to kind of brighten that. But I'm not having it lean gray at all. Now if you use a liner brush at all, uh, 
whether you're new to using one or you've used one before, what you'll probably understand uh, very quickly is that using a liner brush is a lot like drawing. And because uh, if you're working with acrylics, you can just rest your hand on your work surface, as long as your work surface is dry, of course. So then you can add those extra highlights in. And from this, I just love kind of sketching in a, a few extra little highlighty details. And that upper layer of highlight, you don't need to do much with. It can be a lot more sparing with. Um, and in fact, you should be a lot more sparing with it, because otherwise you just run into some problems. So I'm just defining a couple of edges here, a couple of places where I think the light might catch uh, a little bit more than a, than a little bit less. Uh, one thing you can, can uh, definitely do with a lot of these uh, larger rocks like this is put in cracks. Uh, partic particularly if you're doing like a, a walkway or something, a, a crack in the in, in the big rock can be really interesting. And for cracks, I just do a thin line in, in a, usually a, a dark, in this case, uh, my black. My black's a little watered down here, so it's just going to be a bit thinner than that. We have a dark part of the crack. And to really make that stand out, you do dark next to light. But again, Make sure you're paying attention to where your light source is. Basically treating the crack like an extra vertical side coming down. You just got to remember where those lines are. Where you put them. And where you want them to go. Like so. Now we have a crack in that rock. Those are pretty fun to do. Okay, so same deal with that highlight color. A little bit white and a little tiny bit of yellow. I'm going to come in and just kind of a couple little dots in the back. You're not, you know, the, fur the further back anything goes towards the horizon, you're going to see less detail. So you don't have to do a ton with it. Maybe a couple more in here. I'm just kind of sketching in, basically, cr basically hatching with paint, uh, hatching and cross hatching with paint, and, and just establishing where you want those extra details. Same deal. Don't be afraid to kind of go over your over your shadows with your highlights. Just figure out where you want those lines. And don't forget to reference your light source. Always look back. You're like, where's my light? Where's my light? That'll tell you exactly where you want to put those lines. Like so. So we have a flat rock and some little stones. What do we have next? Boulder. Nice, big, giant boulder. Now when I do a big boulder, uh, the technique for the boulder and the stones is actually roughly the same. Uh, so for the stones, it's just sort of a little round shape like this. Uh, for the boulder, it's kind of the same shape, but you're just making it pointy and then rounding off the edges, like so. So I get to start again with our base layer. Our base layer in this case being our gray. Looks like we have to make a little bit more of it. Black, blue, white. Nice clean area on the brush. And Small rock, big rock, so nice and kind of a little bit pointier. That rounds off. A lot of people, when they're putting rocks in, they want to just angle out everything. And they're like, okay, I, oh no, I don't want to put this here. I'm, I'm going to cover up all this stuff I did in the background. Cover it up, do it. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to paint by number this thing. You want to, you know, 
have form on top of form to make it look a lot more natural. Like so. Yeah, my boulders tend to look a little bit more like eggs, too. <laughs> so, all right. I'm actually going to put my baseland shadow into this. Cause it'll be nice and quick while we're waiting, waiting for that to just set up a little bit. Uh, where do I want my light to come from here? You know what? Let's just stick with this left. I, I like the way this is sitting with uh, that coming from, from the left. So for this... Again, paying atten here paying attention to what really are the contour of our shape. Tucking that shadow up underneath it. And from what, and I, one thing I do when I'm doing shadows, I, I try and make my paint a little bit thinner, a little bit more transparent. Uh, as you saw here, when it kind of picked up with the colors of the grass underneath. Um, really kind of helps uh, so you don't have to keep painting over things several different times. Okay. So for the shadows and highlights for this one, it's actually going to be probably a little bit trickier because at this point you actually do have to start thinking about your angles a little bit more. And when you're do painting rocks, rocks are usually, unless they're got wa worn down by uh, wind or water, they're going to be more angular. Uh, so that, for that reason, that's actually why I picked the flat brush to uh, make these rocks. So I'm going to get... Well, I think we'll highlight this first. So we're going to get our white and our gray. A little bit of yellow. So a slight yellow biased gray. And again, we're focusing more on dry brushing, but get our edge and pull in. Now with a big rock a lot of times you're gonna have sort of a make it a little bit more three-dimensional you're gonna have a point where it kinda cuts off and becomes the shadow side. I kinda like to establish that sort of as early as I can. I probably think that's gonna be about there in my light. I'll pull this this way. Think about it like a Bob Ross mountain. You're going to pull one way and pull the other way. There we go. This side of the rock, of course, arcs in a little bit more, so we'll go this way. Right about like that. Now you're going to get, with any object this large, a little bit of cast lighting and cast shadows. And the cast lighting is just going to be a little bit darker. And you're going to get a little bit of an extra edge towards this back side. And then it's going to hit that mid-tone a bit and fade in. Basically making this transition slightly softer. Not super soft, because again, if, that, if we are talking about a hard-faced angle on a rock, it's going to be a little bit heavier but we don't want to completely ignore physics, even if we're doing something that leans maybe a little bit more fantasy. Still has to seem a little believable. So, black into our gray. Put some blue. We're establishing that dark edge. That's going to angle out the other way. Now a lot of people, uh, a lot of people will do mountains and rocks with a knife. And that's one thing that I just absolutely do not do and do not recommend doing. Um, I, I mean, I, I recommend trying it for sure. Uh, it, it is an important technique to learn. However, I find that if you rely on using a knife to make rocks, your rocks tend to look like they were just made with a knife. Um, you know, when you have uh, a brush, you have a lot more control, you have a lot more uh, dynamic range, and you have the ability to do a lot more with it. So we have a strong highlight and a strong shadow here. And I actually want to come back in with my mid-tone and do a little bit to that center section. 
because our highlight is very dominant there. And I think we can uh, soften it just slightly. If this is a nice bright sunny day, the shadow wouldn't be quite that dominant. And you would see a lot of the texture in the crevices in the rock itself. Don't be afraid to sort of under, under mix your paint on the canvas, or paper in this case. Having those extra brush strokes can really add an extra, an interesting layer uh, to that shape. Okay, I'm actually just going to go right into my detail here. I'm actually not going to do a ton with it. I'm just going to add again a couple of those tiny little highlights where I think they're kind of needed. Now those couple of spots that I just talked about with them not mixing your paint too much and throwing some darks in, um, that's where you can throw those extra highlights in uh, to really make those little faces stand out. It really kind of just depends on what kind of shape you want your rock to be. I could probably I could probably spend all day on just one of these rocks, but I will stop for the sake of the tutorial. Okay, so the next uh, three examples down here are what I would like to call fantasy and sci-fi rocks. The ones on top are a lot more realistic. The ones on the bottom, they're going to be a little bit stranger, let's say. So in a lot of digital concept art, one thing you find a ton of is uh, pointy, sharp, jagged rocks. Now, those type of rocks are nice sometimes, but they can also be very easily overused. Uh, so you kind of have to be careful with when you're using them how you're using them, and kind of a point to make them a little bit more realistic when you need to. So what do I mean by pointy rocks? Well, things like this shape. Basically, big, funny triangles like that. Now these are really interesting. They can be very cool to add in to certain landscapes. Uh, but there's two things about them to note. One, you're not being original by using them. And two, you can very easily overuse them, uh, of course, causing uh, a little bit of an issue. Uh, and I guess three, that's three things, uh, is that this type of pointy rock looks good in the background, does not look good in the foreground, uh, specifically because rocks don't have sharp edges like this. Maybe if they're in a silhouette, sure, but most of the time, uh, in the foreground, you're going to get an extra dimension uh, to that rock. So if you put a big, sharp, pointy rock in your landscape, in the foreground, it's going to look a little bit out of place. It's going to look like it doesn't belong because it's just so sharp, so thin. Uh, now you can kind of shade it to feel maybe like it's like a shell of something. But a lot of times, if it's a shell, you want to play with uh, maybe making it more of a dome, just to make it a little bit more believable. So how do you add that extra dimension? Well, again, think basic shapes, basic perspective. Uh, so for that, uh, turn you turn that uh, point into a prism, basically. So we're going to add just another slightly lighter layer right here. And our pointy rock just became two-dimensional. Now, the ones in the back, we can definitely still leave like that in the back. They're in the background, less detail. Uh, a lot of times you're seeing about a, a color shift with atmosphere pers atmospheric perspective. We're not going to worry about that today. We're just focusing on establishing those shapes, as I mentioned before. So background, sharp pointies. Foreground, sharp ones. 
Uh, as you can see, I put a little bit of light there, so our light's going to be coming in that direction. So we'll add our highlight to the background ones. And for that, I want to keep it nice and small. Add that little bit of light, maybe a little bit of play, playing a little bit with a path down in there. Seeing where that light can be. Same thing with this upper one here. Grab that highlight again. Kind of made green there. Oh well. Palette's getting a little busy. We have that light in the foreground, which is going to be more dominant. Kind of leave that mid tone edge a little bit for myself. Maybe for this one, though, we'll make that edge a little softer. I just wiped that on my pants, by the way. I pulled off the excess so I could dry brush that. And then we get our dark. Pull that dark edge in. I'm actually going to grab a little bit of that pre-established green that I had before and because when you have a rock that's pointy like this in the foreground that grass is going to hug up against it a little bit more it's going to grow up and want to climb that rock and of course when you go to shadow it And that grass will have already been established. Right about like that. Alright, now let's have some real fun here. We've done pointy, we've done round, we've done angular stuff. Let's talk real fantasy. Let's make a rock that's curvy. Rocks aren't curvy in, in, in real life, but let's say we're t telling a fantasy story. Maybe this rock has a magical spirit that helps carve it uh, or, or shape the rock itself. Maybe it looks a little bit like an S-curve. But whether you're doing fantasy or reality, as long as your highlights and shadows for that rock are a little bit more realistic, it's going to make it seem like it's actually possible. Okay, so I like the, the light coming from the right here. I think I'm going to have the light coming from the right here, but maybe a little bit, a little bit lower. We'll put it down in this corner. And maybe kind of going up into that side. So you're going to see a lot more shadow up towards the top, maybe wrapping around, and a little more highlights down towards the bottom. So I think I'm going to establish my shadows first for this. And I'm actually going to just follow the contour of the rock, mostly. This is going to be an interesting corner, because you're actually going to get a little bit of light coming up from there. I'm kind of just wrapping my brush and swirling the brush, pulling, but also 
pulling that curve because I'm kind of thinking about that almost like a like a head. I'm kind of w w wrapping that shadow around it more like a well, not even a head. You think about a, a ball and how the light would kind of wrap around. Light and shadow would kind of wrap around in, in a more circular fashion. So the whole thing, while I'm still imagining some angles, I'm imagining a lot more curves to this. Our blue, thinner, play with our shadow. Actually, the way this arcs, you wouldn't see that. This would still be light. Got to think about the shape of that object. Anyway, yeah. So then, I just still don't like the way that looks. It's kind of might might even be off camera at this point. I'm not sure. Anyway, our focus is the rock today. We'll worry about my terrible shadows later. So highlights. I'm gonna come way over here. I gotta get a different angle on this. I would I would have turned this, but I can't right now. So I gotta work around that. Cause I still I still wanna pull, but I like to keep the paper facing the same direction. So I gotta work my way around the If I can't move the paper, I'll move my body. <laughs> I'm pulling that light. It's one thing I love about doing rocks is it's just basic shapes and you're just pulling and pushing the light in, in, in the shadow and building these forms okay it's gonna be a little darker there I'll leave that more as the midtone because it's slightly more or slightly less direct light so that could be a flat face there I'm just gonna pull that out a bit Like so, and then we're gonna get that that edge I talked about before. It's gonna grab a little bit of light from that side. It's that cast lighting I talked about uh, up in here. Not a ton, just a little bit. Like so, and that's clearly not a shape of a rock you'd see in nature. But it might be one that you see in some sort of crazy fantasy landscape, a lot like the stuff that I do on a regular basis. Whoa, hello, I'm spilling water. Must be getting excited. Okay, so we're gonna mix up some highlight color again. Yellow and white. The reason I'm using yellow is because if you just use white, uh, it'll seem almost a little bit too flat. You add yellow, uh, yellow in most cases, you're gonna get a lot more natural light uh, with the yellow. So when you mix it with white, uh, it gets almost brighter than regular pure white by adding that yellow. Here, I'm just going to basically just define this edge a little bit more. Yeah, really, uh, I'm keeping my, anytime I'm detailing, I'm keeping my paint thin. Um, if you have a liquid or a soft body paint, you can just use that. Um, I have been meaning to make a, another video about thinning thinning your acrylic paint because it seems to be a, something that not everyone seems to pick up on um, and it's definitely something that takes some practice to be able to get paint that is still uh, opaque but still but also flow in the way that it would uh, you might get out of an ink or something like that now I'm I want to make note that with the exception of the crack we did up in, in that first example, uh, I'm not putting any uh, detail detailing with my liner brush uh, in, in terms of darking uh, uh, anything. Normally I do. Normally I do both uh, details with both the liner brush in terms of highlights and shadows. That's about what I talked before about pushing those extremes in either direction. Uh, again, I'm just kind of focusing on the shapes of the rocks today. If we were talking 
about detailing stuff, I could go on and, and detail every single one of these rocks, each for about an hour apiece. I'm not going to do that, uh, obviously for the sake of time. Maybe I'll do that in a, in a future video, who knows. Uh, but again, I'm going to come back in and just define a couple edges here. I had a lot of real loose stuff uh, on this front one, so I'm going to just define that edge. about like that. Don't need mu as much in the background as always. Um, background would be less detailed. Okay, so one rock type left. What is it? We've done pointy rocks, we've done round rocks, we've done flat ones and little round ones and big boulders. I don't know what else I could do. Oh wait, yes I do. Uh, pillars. Pillars are weird. They're, they're strange uh, in, in every respect. Um, so whether it be uh, a nice simple straight up and down pillar, uh, an obelisk even, um, those are nice, but anyone who's seen my videos, uh, particularly anything that uh, sh showcases some of my more original work, you'll know that ordinary things, it's not something I do. I always find a way to make it a little stranger. So for this, uh, I modified a technique I use in my sketchbook, so it's basically a pillar with a cookie cutter chunk taken out of it. About like that. My paint's pretty thin right now. I probably could have thickened it a little. Like so. Now when they're in my sketchbook, they're usually just two-dimensional. But I specifically wanted to have an upper angle to show you a nice uh, uh, three-dimensional shape. So I'm going to grab a little extra black in my paint. Might as well keep it thin since I seem to be doing that right now. I'm just establishing the shape here. We'll kind of go back in and play with thicker paint in just a minute. Like so. Our light was here, our light's just going to be uh, now on the left since we're just doing this object. Uh, now, pillars uh, of, of any kind, rock, maybe it's a, a tree, something like this. As we talked about before, any of these shapes, these are just shapes. These are basic geometric shapes. And that's all we're doing is just coloring them uh, to make them seem more like a rock and then dry brushing them over top to make them seem a little bit more natural. So we'll go black and blue, and I'll shadow this real fast. Like that. More black, a little more blue. We'll come in with our dark. And I think I'll, I will leave this a lot stronger of a face, because we are talking about something that's a little bit more geometric. And if you've ever seen uh, a building when the sun's rising, it's, it's very much like this. It's very much light side, dark side. Um, so anything that is a lot more angular uh, and, and you really want to make, make an impact showing that angle, uh, you have a harder edge in that case. Strokes of your brush just kind of become new little rocks that fit in. Now I'm going to use my white color. I'm going to get that down to a nice dry brush and then just pull that on that edge. Now with a, with a flat brush it can be hard to kind of get this curve 
I'm actually kind of probably just going to skip it for the time being and come back with uh, come back with my liner. shapes. Think about your cast lighting. If light is going to capture anything on this side, might be a little bit of an edge there. Some of these rocks we put in here, it might get a little bit there. Like so. And just like that, nice and simple, six different types of rocks. We've got flat ones, stones, boulders, spiky sci-fi rocks, curvy fantasy rocks, and of course, pillars. So I hope you guys have uh, kind of really learned something and enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, hit the like button, get subscribed, and this is Ben from Cinderblock Studios. See you guys next time.